Oh, shut this darn car beeper off. If you leave the keys in, it just beeps. And there we go. So here I'm picking some blackberries in one of my spots, and I found something that I've never seen before. And I dug out this little container so I can harvest some. And I think the only reason why I noticed it is because I'm picking uh, hazelnuts in my backyard now. And all of a sudden I saw one of these. And what the heck? What is this? Look at What is that? What is that? Yeah. So I uh, picked one. And I pull it apart. And look what's inside. This is a hazelnut. I think this is what they call a beaked hazelnut. Look at that. So I'm going to pick a bunch. I got this little container here. I'm going to fill this thing up. I just had another one that just popped off of here. I had two of them together. And when I pulled them apart, one popped out of the container. Now I can't find it. That's okay. There's, there's lots of them on here. Let's do another one. Here. Another one. Look at that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick and throw them in here so I don't linger around here too long. I've got some in my pocket already. And uh, there's one that's got some pretty big. That's the first one I peeled out, then I figured it out. What is that? I was thinking, yo, is that a rose? Hep and oh it's not a rose, hep and when I peel it open, holy cow. I found something that I really like to see. So I'll maybe pick a bunch of these and I'll uh, I'll grow some of them out. Yeah, there's some there, there's one there, there's some here. Oh, those look really big. Compared to the other ones, those are like twice the size. And maybe I'll sort through them and I'll replant the largest nuts. So I found there's like 20 or 30 of these bushes, so I'm easily going to fill this up. So I'll get back to you. So I went to the car and I got my gloves and I might as well grab the tripod and get a little video here. But these uh, huts are full of little like little spicules or something and they're starting to get into my fingers. So uh, there's an issue there. And then the idea is, is how am I going to get them out of their huts if I can't use my bare fingers? But we'll figure something out. I can feel they're in my fingers right now. It's got a defense mechanism from something just to come take them out and eat them right in their mouth. You probably have to wait until they ripen and fall to the ground. Of course, that gives it a little better chance to be able to sprout. Maybe what I'll do is instead of trying to get them out of the husk, the larger ones, I'll just plant them in the husk. And I'll do a little bit of everything. I'll, I'll clean some. I'll plant some right now in the husk. I'll uh, stratify some, do a little bit of everything, and see what happens. This is this one bush right here. Man, that thing is loaded. The one bush, you know. I saw one here, and now I lost sight of it. I noticed another key to this is you can see some when you look at it from eye level or looking down at it. But if you really want to see them, you look, you bend your head down, you know, and you, you look up. Oh, and then you see them. There they are. This is the first time ever I picked big hazel nuts. Oh, and then you drop them to the ground. You're not paying attention. Now I can't feel them as well with my gloves, too, so i got to kind of concentrate a little more. Yeah, I guess I was cleaning husks off of my hazelnuts at the house. I was using a pruning shears to kind of whittle away at it a little bit. Then it would come off kind of easily. So there might be some tests I can do to get these husks off without getting all full of little, little needles. Just subtle little little things. And uh, put 
pretty large variation in size. Here you can see, let me grab uh, this one and this one by their little beaks. You can see the size difference right there. See that? And there's another bush right next door now that's got them. Let's go over there. I didn't get all of them. There's some of them kind of out of the way. I didn't just go grab, but this is from one bush right here. Actually, I was back in the poplars here a little bit looking for blackberries, and then one just kind of popped in front of my face, and I went, what's that? I picked a couple, put it in my pocket, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll go and check on the internet. So at first I thought it was a hazelnut. I thought, oh, that looks like a hazelnut. And then that fuzzy appearance and then and those little, I guess that's why they call them a beak. There's little beaks on them. I never saw beaked hazelnuts before other than you know, seeing it on the internet. And this is a tall bush here. i got to reach up to get this one. A couple of them there. And looking at that, I'm thinking, what is that? Put a couple in my pocket. I was going to research it. I guess I'm saying that tight place, but I guess we got to get the story out. And, uh, and I was thinking a little bit more now, and then, I, then the idea came that it was a peach hazelnut. So I took one out of my pocket. I took the husk off, and sure enough, there is a nut in there. <laughs> oh, what a good find. I didn't plant these. These are just wild coming up with the blackberries here at the edge of a logging road. This is actually part of, uh, I think, the, yeah, I think it is the state of Michigan public land. Some of these are actually quite sizable. Well, you gotta wear gloves because it doesn't take long and your fingers get full of those little, little, little needles that are on the hut. That one didn't quite have as many on. There's some more over here. I see I missed a couple, but I'll leave a couple for whatever, reseeding. There's some there. Probably as you get back in the shade, then there's less. Nuts per bush. There ain't many on this one, but they're all looks like they're pretty big ones here. Oh, there's a whole bunch on this one. One, two, three, four, five clusters on this one. Oh, more than that. Six, seven. Seven clusters on that one branch. Some of them just fall off when you, when you touch them, so they're, they're close. Being right. Ooh, there's a bunch. I was talking about looking up before. You gotta look up at the tall branches too, they're up there too. So these deep hazelnuts, I'll bet that the squirrels don't like to grab them either because of those spicules. So that is interesting. It'll give a human some time to gather some. 
because we're smart enough to put on gloves. At least I am now, anyway. <laughs> Not smart enough to put the camera on. Well, I'm picking either. All of these were on one little small plant with a, or one branch. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen nuts on that one little branch. You know, if you have three or four nuts in a day, have a couple for breakfast or something. You know, don't be a glutton where you eat a whole bunch of them. You just eat a couple at a time. That's a high do dose of, of nutrients and vitamins in that nut to add to your normal meal of carbohydrates that we're all used to eating. What a novel idea. Why don't you eat wild beet hazelnuts? You know, chew them and swallow them and digest them instead of buying vitamins. A lot of you people watching this, you have backyards. Why don't you actually plant a couple? What a novel idea. Instead of long grass, Grow some of the food you eat. Woo! Wow. It's getting a little thicker back there, but I see them. I see them back there. I'm gonna wiggle my way in there. These are thorny blackberries, and I'm gonna get me some beet hazelnuts. I already kind of picked through here for the blackberries. What a haul. Blackberries and uh, and beaked hazelnuts. How much better than that can you get it? This one's got big ones on it. They're all single, so maybe that con contributes to uh, the larger size. They just fall off sometimes. They just rattle them around a little bit. So, yeah. Oh, I see one down here that's been ate. I see the shells of it. I see a bunch of them actually. So something's in here been eating them. A bonanza of food for the wildlife. And now I'm stealing it from them. I don't know if that's fair, so I better leave some. How about I leave the, start leaving the smaller ones and just pick the larger ones? I'm really interested in propagating some of this. I've got plenty of Americans at home that I can have the smaller ones myself, so I'm going to leave the smaller ones. Plenty of big ones too, so we're good at that. We're good for getting them. Some of these bushes are well over my head. Uh, eight feet tall. I don't know if that's all the taller they get, but that's that's the tallest ones in this batch. Oh, there's one back here that's just got monster on here. Okay, there's small ones, we'll leave those. 
This is a perennial plant, so it'll grow more. Ooh, here's a cluster of three, and they're all big ones. So I don't know if that characteristic will carry through in those nuts that there's three here that will grow bushes that will just have all three trees on it or not. But uh, got to choose something. I'm going to choose that. Here's a big one right here. Nice. Oh, there's some big ones. There's some triples over there that are big too. Oh, they're right through this batch of blackberries. Guess I'm gonna earn my keep here. Get through this. Those are smaller. Where's the big ones right there? Actually, it's four. Two of them are big. The side I was looking at, and then there's two smaller ones on the other side. So that's interesting. Okay, we'll leave these little ones here now. So far, look at what I got. <laughs> okay, that's enough video. I'm gonna see if I can pick some more back during the brush. So uh, I'll let you know what's going on at the end of this. Right here, there's a stand of poplars that are pretty large. I mean, there might be eight, eight sticks tall and you know, maybe some of them are as big as 18 inches at the butt. It's an older stand. And underneath this stand of poplars is some beaked hazelnut bushes. And it's pretty loaded. I actually walked in underneath the, the trees and walked in maybe, maybe 100 yards. And then I came out to the edge here where these poplars kind of meet a real small stand of poplars that are really small. And, and this is where I've been picking my blackberries in around this area here of the smaller poplars. And by the way, the blackberries are kind of going away now because it's becoming shaded out. But uh, I walked in about 100 yards and then walked back in on the edge. This is what I got right here. Uh, beaked hazelnuts. That's pretty cool. Now I see some uh, choke cherries over here. I'm going to go over there and eat a few of them. I've been eating the blackberries as I go along picking these beaked hazelnuts. Pretty good. I didn't really go back there and pick any blackberries. And now I see these. I'm fairly certain that these are choke cherries. Now I'm not a, a biological expert here. So if you never see this video, that means I'm dead. And you see they've got this, I don't know how they pronounce it, racemi. But there's a long, I'll just pick one, I'm gonna show you. Let's see if there's one with more ripe berries. You see, they, I think the birds have been picking them already, or maybe they're just not quite ripe yet. Maybe I better not even here. Let me find one that's ripe. Well, I can show you, I've got it pretty close here, but it's got this long, huge hanging stem here. And then the berries are all along that stem. So here's some berries here that are kind of shoveled up, so it's got to be ripe. Not much meat on them. They're sour. They're not tart. There's such a thing as a pleasant sourness. Should might qualify. When you feel them and they're kind of soft. Gotta be ripe then. I'm probably overdoing it for not knowing for sure. I got them growing on my property too, but the birds get them right away. Those are the seeds right here. Come on, you can... There you go. Those are the seeds. Here's a handful here. My grandma told me you never eat these with, with milk. Mm. She told me even better over her. <clears throat> I don't know how I missed them because I walked through here with my berry bush before. 
here, look at that. I walked on the other side about this way. Ooh, they're nice and soft. Oop, I dropped one already. Get it, big ones too. Got them. Here they are. Wild blackberries. They're all choke cherry seeds now. Eat those all at once. Oh, mm, that's pretty good. That's sweet. I mean, sweet for a wild blackberry. More. Okay. We got us a haul. We're gonna go look for some more blackberries yet. Yeah. I've been picking for quite a few hours already. It started at 9.30 and it's after one. And it's about just about scrounging. One ripe one here, one, one ripe one there. Every once in a while you find a branch that's got numbers of ripe blackberries. But it takes a lot of walking. Somebody was in here this morning and grabbed uh, the bigger batches. This is what kind of dealing with here. And there's a lot of berries that have uh, these little brown spots on them. It tastes good. I've been trying to eat eat all those I can. This one's not quite ripe. I eat those two. I bring the best ones home. So there's quite a few patches where there are lots of them that are unripe. So it's coming. I'm right on the front end of it. But there's other people picking. So it's worth going around and scrounging and getting a batch, making sure you have one because once it starts, it's going to be hard to get yourself some berries. You gotta get your timing right. So uh, that's where I'm at. This is the first time I was back in here kind of four-wheeling with my with my Subi. It's pretty cool. It's like going around with a with a um, go-kart around all these curves and these back roads. It runs pretty good back here. I'll show you what's in my pockets. Loads and loads and loads of big beak tazel nuts. I found a really nice batch of bushes underneath a monster a soft maple tree. And uh, found also another really nice berry patch. So I'm going to pick these berries where I'm parked. Because I was off, off away from where the car's parked when I found these. I'm going to pick these here where the cars parked the blackberries. And I'm going to uh, go back there and I'll take a video of that tree. I mean, I filled all. i got three pockets that I had empty. And I filled them up. So I picked them with my bare hands. So my hands are full of those little pickers that are on these husks. kind of a lonely spot it's there's a it's a bunch of it's like a sand flat and there's a bunch of really short blackberries plants all around it and uh, one more, one more pocket. and just a couple of bushes it I mean no they all had big ones on it there's one in particular that's really huge, and I didn't I didn't get them because my pockets were full. So I gotta go back there. I'll take a video, like I said, and I'll uh, show you where I'm getting them off of. Let's see, they're in the ground. Okay. I mean, they're that bigger. And I'm in a bag there. But there's a lot of berries right here too. So I'm gonna finish. I got took out that peanut container. I started on it. Yeah, it's about a third of the way. If I spend the time, I definitely can fill it up here. Let's walk over and show you some. You see, they're short and they're smaller. Short plants with smaller berries, but there's lots of them that are ripe on them. 
probably because they're out here more in the sun. There's just a lot of them all along here. Okay. And I did fill up that planter's peanut container with blackberries. Now these are smaller and they're not as sweet. So I think I'll uh, reduce those down, get the seeds out of it, use it as a stock for maybe an applesauce or something. And we're going to go after those uh, big hazelnuts now. But before we do that, I want to get something else. I need to have some type of... Oh, this will work right here. So these are the fields that I'm picking the blackberries on. You can see they're very short plants small berries but being small like this I think that concentrates the nutrients and they're probably very very healthy berries now I don't know that for sure but that's what I'm thinking so I'm gonna eat some of them get my diet into being more varied the continuation of a varied diet I guess I didn't need a piece of carbide to use one of these Pieces of wood, and that's what we'll do. Oh, that one's kind of. That one will work. Oh, this one will be better, it's kind of flat right there. So I hope I can find it now. That's over here. Oh, I lost it. I should have marked it. Oh, there it is right there. That is bear scat. And look at all the seeds in it. There's some bigger seeds too. I'm not sure what those are from. And all those little seeds, those are all blackberries. I'm going to collect that and I'm going to sprout them. Grow me some, some blackberry, bear scat wild blackberry plants. There's a bigger seed here too of something. Oh, that's a blackberry that didn't digest. I don't know what those bigger seeds are. Oh, I'll bet you they're choke cherries. When I get home, I'll just put these in the freezer. I guess we can leave some here to sprout. Spread them out a little bit. There we go. Bear scat wild blackberry seed. Okay. That'll be fun. Got my car over there. So now we're going to go after those big hazelnuts. Here's the area. I don't have a lot of battery left, and I don't have a lot of. I don't have any extra batteries, so it's going to get right after right here. That's the tree. Look at that. That's a monster. I couldn't even get my arms around a quarter of that. I picked all these right here. I had my pocket full, and I found this one here that was in a really high one. That's very big. Get these picked right here. That's uh, pretty good right there. They're all over the bottom too, but the ones left on top are really exceptional. Big, like a nice big, a nice tree. Here's my take from the wild foraging up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And these are the berries. The taller two in the back, taller two glasses. These berries are definitely sweeter and larger. And this here, they're, they're a little less sweet, a little more stringency. And I think they're going to be good for cooking. So I'm going to 
cook them and I think what I'm going to do is uh, cook them, strain out the seeds and use it as a base for some type of a, an apple dish. And then this was the first batch of beaked hazelnuts that I picked. And this is just random, There's this is probably picked from, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 bushes. And then half of this, and all of this, was picked off of one root stock of beaked hazelnut. It had a number of shoots coming out of it. I didn't count them, but I'm going to go back because I ran out of battery and there's still some more I can pick there from other bushes. But this all came off of, this whole bag here came off of one root stock with maybe 10 or 12 shoots and then half of this was also included in that. I picked a couple smaller ones first, smaller bushes, and then I ran into this big monster thing. I think that's a special bush. I gotta go through these and I think these are the ones I'm gonna propagate. They're growing in shade. They probably are only getting two or three hours of morning sun and two or three hours of afternoon sun and it was underneath a very large soft maple tree. And of course got one more harvest. Bear scat full of blackberry seeds. I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna propagate there. I'm gonna have a bear scat wild blackberries. I'll call them that. These are the bear scat blackberries. How about that? Okay, now I gotta do is break a couple of these things open and uh, find out what kind of meat is in those nuts. I can't find a hammer, so I have to use this to, to hammer on them. But here's a couple of these nuts. Let's peel them open. See how fast they come out of there. Oh, they come out easy. That's what it looks like inside of there. They're small, but I've read they're, that they really got a high flavor. Okay, now let's see if we can get these things cracked. That looks pretty clean right there. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Oh, it's got a nice little nut to it. Look at that. Can't tell if that's even focusing. I think so. Let's try it. Oh, it's got a high flavor. Oops. I just lost a piece. Mmm, that's different. It's not like the Americans. Oh, I don't want to break it in that many pieces. Can't tell if it's got like a vanilla flavor. No. Oh. Hmm. Pretty good. Ah, did it again. They got a nutcracker, but it's not up here. You can see this is... I can see that. Let's put it in my palm. Spread it out so you can see the... That's the meat. It's not sweet. It's not tart, not bitter. I think it's got a little bit of a vanilla taste to it. It's delicious. I wasn't expecting that. Oh yeah. Good. And here you see the beaks. These are the husks. And that little, that little pointer there, that's the beak. Beak hazelnuts. They're a real winner. Go out foraging and try some for yourself. Alright. Thanks a lot for watching.